Hey guys, it's so good to see everyone again. I see Ella's here, B and Eleanor, uh, Maya, Lucy, Aaron, Noah, Sarah. It's so good to see everyone. Um, let me stop this scrolling screen because we are gonna begin now, so we don't need to say we'll begin shortly. There we go. All right, hello and welcome to another episode of Spring into STEM. Spring into STEM. I'm Hannah with Science Club for Girls, and that was Mr. Music with your theme song. Ooh, a little change today, Mr. Music. I like it. That's awesome. Do you want to play something as you uh, exit out? Cool. <laughs> Awesome. Hey, Bonnie. I'm glad you could join us today, too. I am so excited that everyone's here because today we are doing probably what everyone's been waiting for, which is some explosive science. We're going to be investigating chemical reactions by doing some explosive experiments. So today might be a little messy. So I'll go over some safety um, instructions in a bit with our good friend, Dr. Marbles. Um, but before we get in, I want from last week. Last week, we talked all about eggs, and I want to give a special shout out to a few of our a few of our viewers who actually went ahead and did some of their experiments at home. This is Callie. Callie's in second grade, uh, and she is an awesome scientist. It looks like she did the egg in vinegar uh, experiment, and I'm sure that she had some pretty cool results. I can already see those bubbles forming, which remember is that carbon dioxide from our chemical reaction. Pretty cool. Way to go, Callie. I also wanna give a special shout out to B and Eleanor. Um, they also did the egg experiment and we can see here the final results. They did a great job of dissolving that egg through chemical reactions and exposing the egg membrane. Way to go, guys. Awesome science work. <laughs> Mr. Music is proud of you too, so great job. All right, I also did an extension of last week's activity because Sarah suggested that we test apple cider vinegar. Now I didn't do that, but I did test uh, vegetable oil. And the reason why I chose vegetable oil was because it has a very different consistency. Remember the vinegar was really kind of free flowing, whereas oil is a little bit more slimy. So I put my egg in vegetable oil for about two days and it's really, really gross. But as you can see, the shell is still there. So the vegetable oil was not able to dissolve the shell. And that might be because the vegetable oil is not acidic, acidic. That's a word we're gonna talk about later today, so keep that in mind. If anyone else did any other egg activities, please comment about it in the comment box or send Science Club for Girls a picture on Facebook and we'll highlight it next week. All right, now let's head into this week's experiments. First, before we jump in, we need to make our science notebook. Now, if you've been with us since episode one, you might already have a science notebook. Make sure you have that with you now. If you don't have a science notebook, you'll just need a piece of paper and something to write with. To make your science notebook, just fold your piece of paper in half and write something really cool on the cover, like Hannah's super awesome science notebook. On the inside, you'll wanna write today's date, which is May 6th, and our topic, which is chemical reactions. I'll give you a few minutes to write that. And while we do that, Mr. Music's gonna play a little jingle. Some work. All right, now that we have our science notebook set up, this is going to be where you write down any observations, hypotheses, or results from today's experiments. You can also use this at home when you do your own experiments. All right, now it's time to jump into the science. As I said, today we're going to explore chemical reactions. 
Now, a chemical reaction is when one or more different substances, sorry, one or more substances change into a different substance. This usually happens when you combine two different things and something happens. Last week was a great example of a chemical reaction. When we combined the vinegar with the egg, there was a chemical reaction that happened between the eggshell and the vinegar, and that created the carbon dioxide bubbles that we saw. Today, we're gonna to explore other chemical reactions, which I'm really excited about. Now, before we jump in to chemical reactions, oh, yes, before we jump into chemical reactions, I do wanna bring in our extra special expert because he's going to help us to set up our station so we're really nice and safe for our chemical reactions. All right, everyone, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Or maybe it's doctor, we'll have to ask him. Marbles, here we go. Hey! Hey! Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. So and so I said, oh, it is oh, so good so to cool. see you. I'm so now, excited to be back. Before we jump in, I have to ask a question because so many people have been wondering, yeah. is it Mr. Marbles or Dr. Marbles? Ah, good question, Mr. Oh. Yeah, uh, I did get a doctorate, but because I study so many things, I'm interested in, and you know this, Hannah, I'm just curious. I know. I just go by the name Mr. because I take interest in just everything. Cool. Well, I can see that you have a few pieces of equipment on today. Will you tell us about those? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, whenever you're doing experiments, Hannah, and you know this, that when you're working with science, one of the things you want to be really careful of is safety. That's right. And I can't say enough about it. If you notice, I have a couple of things because I know we're doing chemicals today. We are. And you know what? Chemicals are amazing, but chemicals can be a little tricky. So you want to be safe. So here's what I've got. I've got these all on today. I brought my special goggles. You could see those. Oh yeah, wait, I have some too. Let me put them on. Oh, put them on. There we go. You know what, I love them. Thank you. So Why do we have goggles. to wear these? Say again? Why do we have to wear the goggles? Ah, good question. Well, you wear goggles because sometimes uh, chemicals can splatter. Sometimes mm. drips or some of it can splash. And that's not a problem if you've got protection on. And I've got protection. What else do I have to protect myself? Not just goggles. Check out this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I put this shirt on because you know I've got my wonderful leather jacket that I love. But I'm protecting that today by wearing this special shirt. And this is just a shirt I don't care much about. So if I get a chemical on it, who cares? That's a great idea. Yeah. I also wore a t-shirt that I can easily wash. So that's exactly. also really important. Perfect. The other thing I like to do, just some extra H's and T's, is I like want to take care of my hands and I want to make sure I wash my hands. That's Can't really say enough about that. You also want to make sure you clean up the area. Definitely. Everyone likes to do experiments. Not everyone likes to clean. That's right. Mr. Marbles, I actually put down some newspaper to make sure I protect my table. Well, that's perfect. Yeah, I thought that might be a good idea. Great idea. You know what I do is I sometimes put down some plastic or something, some plastic wrap. So I've done that as well. That's a great idea too. And then lastly, if you've got, like me, long hair. Oh, yes. You definitely want to wrap that back. That's Get right. Out of the way so you're not dealing with it. And then you're ready to go. Awesome. Well, I think we're ready to get started. So, um, Mr. Marbles, we're going to call you back in when we start the experiment so you can join us. But for now, just stick, uh, stay on standby. Will do. <laughs> All, right, we'll see you fun. All right. Now that we have the safety taken care of, it's time to jump in. First, today we're going to, as I said, do some chemical reactions. Now, sometimes when you combine things, a chemical reaction doesn't actually happen. You can tell if a chemical reaction is occurring by four things. The first thing is that there's a change in color. If you observe a change in color when you um, combine things, you know that a chemical reaction is taking place. Something new is forming. You can also tell a chemical reaction is taking place if there's an odor, a certain smell. 
Now you won't be able to tell that over the computer, but I'll give you a hint. The next one, gas bubbles. We saw this last time with the gas bubbles forming on the eggshell. If you see gas bubbles forming today, you know a chemical reaction is happening. And the last one is if there's an energy change. What this means is if something gets hotter or colder. Now again, you might not be able to tell it over the computer, but I can give you some hints. All right, now let's give it a shot. The first thing we're gonna do today, I'm really excited, is we're gonna make volcanic slime. <laughs> I'm so excited. So what we're going to do is um, first make slime, which I know a lot of you might be able to do, but then we're going to make it volcanic. So for this experiment, you're going to need some glue, some vinegar, borax, you can find this just in your regular grocery store, water, baking soda, and food coloring. You'll also need a few different recyclables just in case you don't want to get your regular like dishes dirty. I like to use recycled jars or recycled plastic containers. Okay. Now that we have our safety materials ready, we are ready to get started. The first thing you're gonna do is measure out about three fourths of a cup of glue. This is just your regular glue, like your Elmer's glue that you use to craft. Then you wanna add in three fourths of a cup of water. Remember, be extra careful with this, which is why the newspaper is a good idea. All right, I'm gonna put the lid on and give it a shake to make super watery glue. Make sure that lid's on nice and tight, otherwise you're gonna get a little messy. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Music. It looks like milk, but don't drink it. It's glue and water, Blah. Okay, now, in a separate container, you're going to put a half a tablespoon of borax. You're also gonna put two cups of water. After you do that, you're going to add your glue and water into your borax and water. Now is the fun part, time to mix it. You can either use a pencil, a spoon, or your hands. I'm gonna use my hands because I like the feeling of it. It's gross. Ooh, already look what it looks like. Ah! All right. Now, there's already a chemical reaction happening, and I can tell you how I know that. The slime feels really cold. Remember, we said that a sign of a chemical reaction is a temperature change. If things get colder, it means that there's a chemical reaction happening. You can also tell because it looks like a different texture. That means something new is forming. Okay, now the fun part. I'm gonna make this volcanic. Before I do that, I'm gonna add some food coloring just to make it look pretty. I think I might add some red. Boop, boop. I'm gonna give it a few, ooh, you can already see it turning red. Okay, now I'm gonna add in baking soda and vinegar. Before I do that, I want you to make a hypothesis. What do you think will happen when I add the baking soda and vinegar? Think about it. Dr. Marbles, I want you to think about it too because I want to hear what your hypothesis is. What do you think is going to happen when I put in baking soda and vinegar? Oh, my God. Hey, Dr. Marbles. Hey, how are you, Hannah? I'm good. I'm so curious what your hypothesis is. What do you think is going to happen when I add the baking soda and vinegar to my slime? Well, first of all, that is the gooeyest, grimiest, weirdest stuff I've ever seen. But you know what? I love it. I know, me too. It's so messy. 
It's so cool. And I love the color you put in. So what do you think is going to happen when I add my baking soda and vinegar? Huh. Hmm. I think they're going to react. I think you're going to get a reaction, I so Hannah. I think so, too. Now, remember, in order to tell if a reaction is happening, we need to see if we observe a change in color, a smell, bubbles, or an energy change, getting hotter or colder. Yep. Evidence okay. of a reaction. Exactly. All right. Let's take a look. This might get a little messy. So, Mr. Music, would you mind actually holding my computer up? I don't want it to get all messy. Cool. Hurry up. I know. We're all waiting. All right. Now for the fun part. I'm going to add one tablespoon of baking soda. Wow. I know. Give it a little mix. And now I'm going to add a half a cup of vinegar. Oh, my God. I this can't is the fun part. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! That's crazy. Yeah! <laughs> Talk about a reaction, man. I know. Hey, That's everyone, so comment. What sign of a chemical reaction are you observing? The bubbles are a real indicator of a reaction. That's because right. you know what's in. You know what's in those bubbles? What's in those bubbles? Gas. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> in fact, that gas is actually carbon dioxide. And we're going to talk about that in one moment, as soon as I clean off my hands. So what happened in that? Mr. Marbles, don't take it personal, but I'm going to make you a little smaller on the screen, OK? No problem. Great. <laughs> So what happened? Well, we did have a chemical reaction. This is exactly what happened in our reaction. We mixed baking soda and vinegar. Baking soda is what we call a base, and vinegar is what we call an acid. When those two things mix, they actually create something brand new, which is called carbon dioxide. Now, that carbon dioxide we saw in the form of bubbles. It also created water and some sodium, too. Sodium is just like kind of salt. Dr. Marbles, anything to add? I just find it amazing that all of that happened in that little container. Just it's pretty shows cool. You, really shows you the power of chemistry. That's right. And then in a moment, we'll talk about how chemistry is really all around us. We experience chemical reactions every day in so many different things that we do. All right. Now for our second experiment. Dr. Marbles, I'll bring you back in a little bit, okay? I'll be here. Sounds good. Now, in case that experiment was too uh, messy for your house, you can do an easier experiment, too. I'm going to call this an apple cano. Pretty cool. So for this experiment, you need very similar materials, um, but I'll go over them just in case. You will need an apple, and you'll need an adult to help you with this part. You'll need to cut out the center of the apple um, just about halfway down to leave a little bit of a hole. This is where our, our volcano is going to occur. Take a plate and put the apple on the plate. This way it will catch anything that comes out because it's going to be a volcano, so we're going to have an eruption. All right. Now, put a few spoonfuls of baking soda in your volcano, in your apple, not a volcano, an apple. <laughs> okay. Now for the fun part. I'm going to add some food coloring again just to make it look a little bit more like lava. And I'm also going to put in some vinegar. Okay, here's the fun part. Ready? Three, two, one. Whoa! An apple cano. Now, if you don't have an apple at home, you can always just do this in a jar. Either thing works. Um, vinegar and baking soda is an acid-base reaction. We also saw those bubbles on the apple, so we know a chemical reaction is happening. Same thing as before. Those bubbles were carbon dioxide that was formed from the baking soda and vinegar mixing. Pretty cool.
All right. Well, I hope you had fun with some of those reactions. I do want to bring back Mr. Marbles to talk a little bit more about chemistry. Hey, Mr. Marbles. Oh, hey, Hannah. What did you think of today's experiments? Well, I thought they were pretty awesome. And, were uh, you know, kind of different in some ways. That first one with the gloppity gloop, and then you <laughs> followed it with that really super kind of apple volcano thing. I think it was really nice to show both kinds of reactions. Exactly. And both of them are easy things that you can do at home. Just always be careful to have the right safety equipment like we talked about. Now, Dr. Marbles, Mr. Marbles, sorry. We did kind of talk about how chemistry is everywhere. Can you give us some examples of chemical reactions that we experience every day? Totally. You know, I was just walking outside this morning, Hannah, and one of the things I saw, believe it or not, was a chemical reaction. No way. Yep. I see them all what? around me. I can't That's help so cool. Me. No matter what I do, they're all over the place. That's because I'm curious. That's right. Well, it turns out that this chemical reaction was happening at the site of a construction. They were building a house. Cool. And they brought in some of this powdered kind of material, kind of powdered dirt. You guys know what that is. Cement. And then they mixed it with water. And it went from this soft powder to this hard cement. Hmm. You know what that is? Do you know what that is? A reaction. Oh, Chemical how reaction. did you know it was a reaction? What did you see? Well, it got, you know, I saw a little bit of steam. It looked a little bit hot, like it was letting off some heat. I saw some oh. smoke. And then I watched and watched, and it changed its structure. It went from being this kind of soft powder to a very hard material. That's what's so amazing about chemistry. You can start with two different things, put them together, and you get another thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. In fact, if you've ever cooked anything in the kitchen, there's so much chemistry happening there. Think right. about what it looks like before you mix the ingredients and what it looks like after. Yeah. A cake looks very different than all those separate ingredients at the beginning, right? What about jello? That's a great example too. Same. Also, completely changes form. I love jello. I do too. It's I'll really tell you good. the other place that you see a lot of uh, chemistry going on, believe it or not, inside your body. What? Yep. No so, way. Yep. Big chemistry lab. Your stomach, inside your no. stomach are chemicals. You eat your food and that food gets broken down by the enzymes, chemicals inside your stomach and throughout Ooh. your body. So your body is doing chemistry all the time. So even as our viewers are sitting here right now, there's chemical right now. reactions going on inside of them? Right now. Crazy right now. Wow. That's yep. so cool. So we don't have to go very far to find chemical reactions. All around us. That's awesome. Well, yep. I do want to share a really cool chemist that I think you might be interested in, Dr. Marbles. Oh. So this woman, her name is Alice Ball, and she was a famous chemist. So she was a professor. She was actually the first African-American and the first female professor at the University of Hawaii. And she discovered a cure or a treatment for leprosy. Do you know about her, Dr. Marbles? I, I do. That's very, awesome. very amazing work because leprosy is not a good thing. No. So she, she used this kind of fruit plant thing called chalmugra and she created an oil from it that helped as a really helpful treatment for leprosy up until about the i think it was 1940s wait a minute pretty cool yeah, she, used the, now, she used the fruit to fix leprosy yeah she found certain helpful chemicals in that fruit that would help as a treatment for leprosy and now fun fact february 29th is alice ball day in hawaii huh. Pretty cool. Very well, cool. There's chemistry, there's chemistry all around us, and I'm so happy that you were able to um, bring in some really helpful information, Mr. Marbles. Um, and yeah, I hope that you can join us next week for some more science. Oh, I would love to. Let me tell you That's something. I love science. I love chemistry. I love this show, and I'm just happy to be here. And uh, I can't wait to see you next week. Me too. I think it's going to be really fun. Next week, we're exploring the science of sound. What? 
And I think we might have a special guest. Mr. Music. He knows a lot about sound. And there's so much science in sound. It's true. It's like my second favorite to chemistry. I know. I know. And Damn. third favorite to eggs, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. All right. Well, I do want to say that if anyone wants to send in photos of any of the experiments they did from this week, please comment below the video or send them to Science Club for Girls on Facebook. I would love to highlight some amazing scientists next week. So um, yeah, that would be awesome. Otherwise, you can go to scienceclubforgirls.org for more at-home STEM activities. And we'll be back next week with another episode of SCFG Live. Yay! Woo! This was Spring into STEM. Bye, Mr. Marvels. Oh, bye, Hannah. Bye, guys. We can't wait to see you again next week. Until then, hope you're staying safe and healthy and experimenting at home. Bye, guys. <laughs>